Chapter 1. Monsterville. In the heart of Monsterville, where towering spires made of twisted bones pierced the sky and rivers flowed with a viscous, tar-like substance, there lived a young monster girl named Kuro. Kuro was a Gashido Kuro, a creature with long arms and legs, and skin as pale as the moon. She had big, round eyes that shone like lanterns in the dark, and hair that flowed like the wind through her messy black locks. Despite living in a world filled with all manner of terrifying creatures, Kuro was consumed by one fear above all others, humans. It wasn't that she'd ever seen one, mind you. The last time humans were said to have existed in Monsterville was eons ago, when the world was still young and fragile. But stories of their cruelty, their ferocity, and their seemingly endless desire to conquer and destroy had been passed down through generations of monster children. Kuro's parents, Goro and Hannah, tried to reassure her that humans were just a myth, a bedtime tale told to frighten naughty monsters into behaving. But Kuro couldn't shake the feeling that they might be real, that one day they would stumble upon Monsterville and wreak havoc on its inhabitants. As she wandered through the dark streets of her city, Kuro's ears picked up every little sound, the rustle of leaves, the creaking of wooden bridges, even the distant rumble of thunder. Her heart skipped a beat with each new noise, as if it might be the first sign of human presence. She tried to distract herself by thinking about her favorite things, the way the stars twinkled above, the taste of sweet, succulent bloodberries, and the sound of her friend Akira's laughter. But even those happy thoughts couldn't shake the feeling that humans were watching her, waiting for their chance to strike. As the night wore on, Kuro grew more and more agitated, she paced back and forth in front of her home, her long arms flailing wildly as she tried to calm herself down. Her parents, sensing her distress, came out to join her, wrapping comforting arms around her trembling body. Kuro-chan, there's nothing to be afraid of, Goro said gently. We're safe here in Monsterville. We have each other, and we have the city to protect us. But Kuro couldn't shake the feeling that they weren't just talking about monsters. They were talking about humans too. And as she looked up at her parents, she wondered, what if I'm wrong? What if humans are real? The thought sent shivers down her spine, and for a moment, Kuro forgot to breathe. But then, with a deep breath, she remembered something else. Monsterville was full of monsters, and they all had each other's backs. They were strong, fierce creatures, who wouldn't let anything, not even humans, threaten their way of life. With newfound determination, Kuro stood up straight, her shoulders squaring off against the darkness outside. She smiled, a fierce grin spreading across her face. Then I'm not afraid, she declared to her parents and the world at large. I'll face whatever comes next with my head held high and my claws sharp. And as she spoke those words, something inside of Kuro shifted. Her fear began to fade away, replaced by a growing sense of confidence and courage. From that moment on, Kuro knew that no matter what lay ahead, humans, or not she was ready to face it head on. Chapter 2 The Whispering Walls Kuro couldn't shake the feeling that humans were watching her, waiting for their chance to strike. As she walked through the dark streets of Monsterville, the shadows seemed to grow. Longer and darker, like grasping fingers reaching out to snatch at her clothes. She quickened her pace, her long legs striding quickly across the cobblestone streets. Her parents had told her that humans didn't exist anymore, but Kuro couldn't help feeling a sense of unease whenever she walked alone in the city. As she turned a corner, she noticed something strange. The walls seemed to be whispering to each other, their stone surfaces crackling and creaking softly, as if they were sharing a secret. Kuro's ears perked up, her head cocked to one side as she tried to listen more closely. She had never heard the walls whisper before, but now it sounded like they were trying to tell her something. Find the library. One wall whispered, its stones shivering with excitement. Be careful, the librarian is not what she seems. Another wall whispered back, 
its voice barely above a whisper. Kiro's eyes widened as she listened to the conversation between the walls. She had always loved the library in Monsterville, it was a place where monsters and humans alike could go to learn and grow. But now, with the whispers of the walls, Kuro felt a sense of unease creeping over her. What did the librarian have to do with humans? And what secrets was she hiding? Kuro's curiosity got the better of her, and she made up her mind to visit the library that day. She would find out what the whispers were all about and uncover the truth behind the librarian's mysterious behavior. As she walked towards the library, Kuro felt a sense of excitement building inside of her. She was ready for whatever lay ahead, whether it was a human or not. Kuro pushed open the creaky door of the library, her eyes adjusting to the dim light within. The shelves towered above her, stretching up towards the ceiling like giant stone fingers, their surfaces lined with ancient tomes and dusty scrolls. She made her way deeper into the library, her feet making soft crunching sounds on the floor, as she navigated through the narrow aisles between the shelves. The air was thick with the musty scent of old books, and Kuro's nose wrinkled in distaste. As she turned a corner, she spotted a figure sitting behind the circulation desk, its back to her. The librarian, Kuro assumed, was hunched over some papers or book, completely absorbed in whatever task it was performing. But as she watched, the figure slowly began to move, its head coming up and around, revealing a pair of piercing green eyes that seemed to bore into Kuro's very soul. The eyes were surrounded by a network of fine wrinkles, etched into the skin like the lines on an ancient map. Welcome, young one, the librarian said in a voice that sent shivers down Kuro's spine. I've been expecting you. Kuro felt a jolt of surprise, her mind racing with questions. How did this, being know she was coming? And what did it mean by expecting her? The librarian stood up, its movements slow and deliberate, as if it were performing some sort of ritual dance. As it rose to its feet, Kuro saw that the being was dressed in a long, flowing cloak, its hem dragging on the floor like a ghostly bridal veil. Who, what are you? Kuro asked, her voice barely above a whisper. The librarian smiled, its eyes glinting with amusement. Ah, my dear child, it said, its voice dripping with honey-like sweetness. I am but a humble servant of the library. My name is Ravenna, and I have been watching over this place for, well, let us just say for a very long time. Kuro's eyes narrowed, her mind working overtime to unravel the mystery that was Ravenna. But as she looked deeper into the librarian's eyes, she saw something there that made her blood run cold. Something that seemed to be watching her, waiting for its chance to strike. And Kuro knew, in that moment, that she had stumbled into a whole lot more than just a simple mystery. Chapter 3, The Shadow in the Stacks Kuro's eyes were fixed on Ravenna, her mind trying to process the librarian's words. But as she looked deeper into the being's eyes, she saw something that made her skin crawl. A shadow, like a dark cloud, seemed to be lurking just behind Ravenna's gaze. It was as if the librarian was hiding something, something that Kuro couldn't quite see. Ravenna, Kuro said, her voice firm but trembling slightly, what's going on? What do you mean by watching over this place? Ravenna smiled again, its eyes glinting with amusement. Ah, my dear child, I'm afraid it's a long story. One that requires patience. Kuro felt a surge of frustration. She had come to the library seeking answers, and now Ravenna was giving her riddles. Patience. Kuro repeated, her voice rising in anger. I don't have patience. I need to know what's going on. Ravenna's smile grew wider, its eyes glinting with a knowing look. Ah, but that's where you're wrong, my dear child. You see, time is relative, and sometimes it's not just about waiting for the answers. Kiro's mind was racing now, her thoughts spinning out of control. What did Ravenna mean? And what had she meant by saying that time was relative? As Kiro continued to press Ravenna for answers, 
The librarian suddenly stood up, its movements swift and silent. I'm afraid we've been interrupted, Ravenna said, its voice dripping with menace. But don't worry, we'll continue this conversation soon. And with that, Ravenna vanished into thin air, leaving Kuro staring at an empty space where the librarian had once stood. Kuro's heart was pounding in her chest now, her mind racing with questions and fears. What had just happened? And what lay ahead for her? As Kuro turned to leave the library, she felt a strange sensation wash over her. It was as if the shadows around her were shifting, growing darker and more sinister. And then, in an instant, everything went black. When Kuro came to, she found herself back in her own bed, surrounded by darkness. But as she sat up and looked around, she saw something that made her blood run cold. A small piece of paper on her bedside table, with a message scrawled on it in Ravenna's handwriting, the shadows will come for you soon. Kuro's eyes widened as she stared at the message on the piece of paper. It was Ravenna's handwriting, and it seemed to be warning her about something. But what? She threw off the covers and got out of bed, determination burning within her. She had to know what was going on. And she had to stop whatever darkness was coming for her. As she walked through the dark streets, the shadows around her seemed to grow longer and more menacing. Kuro felt a shiver run down her spine, but she pushed on, determined to uncover the truth. She eventually arrived at the old clock tower that stood in the heart of Monsterville. It was said to be a hub for all sorts of supernatural activity, and Kuro had heard rumors that Ravenna was somehow connected to it. As she approached the clock tower, she saw that its face was cracked and worn, the hands frozen at midnight. But as she looked closer, she saw something strange, a small door hidden behind the clock's mechanism, partially open. Kuro's heart pounded in her chest, as she pushed open the door and stepped inside. The air within was thick with dust, but she could feel a presence lurking just out of sight. And then, as she looked up, she saw them. A thousand shadows, like dark feathers, dancing around her. They seemed to be watching her, waiting for their chance to strike. But Kuro stood tall, her eyes locked on the shadows. She knew that she had to face whatever darkness was coming for her, head on. You can't hurt me, she said aloud, her voice firm and steady. I know what you are, and I'm not afraid. The shadows seemed to pause, as if considering her words. And then, in an instant, they vanished into thin air. Kuro stood there, panting, as the dust settled around her. She had faced her fears and come out on top. And as she stepped back outside, she saw that the clock tower's face was now fixed at midnight, its hands moving smoothly and precisely. Ravenna appeared beside her, a small smile playing on its lips. Well done, Ravenna said. You've passed the test. Kuro turned to Ravenna, her eyes narrowing. What test? she asked. Ravenna chuckled, its voice low and mysterious. The test of courage, it said. The test of facing your fears and coming out on top. And with that, Ravenna vanished into thin air, leaving Kuro standing alone in the night, her heart still pounding from the experience. The end.